Samantha from Jessima Tutorials here and today we're going to be doing part two of our project. So last time uh, we did our rose cane and so I've been testing out a few samples of how I'm going to put them into the links. So the first one was to actually put one large rose in there. So I just took the cane that we made and squished it down again so that now I have a nice large rose. So I quite like that one. Second choice was to put a pearl light backing in and put some slices on. And then finally, third choice was to just put the, all the slices in and then buff it. Which creates this interesting kind of kaleidoscopy look. It doesn't really look like a rose anymore, but it looks quite interesting. So I'm thinking that I'm going to actually use all three. So let's get on with making these. So start with the large rose. So I've got my link over here. I'll bring over our rose which I press down. Now I'm going to take a fairly large slice which will give us some room to move around. And now just take it and stretch it in your hands as much as you can without ripping it. And then place it in your link and press down. And don't worry about fingerprints, we can solve that in just a minute. And just squish it up until it reaches the edges. Now it's quite easy to remove this from the link, so if it doesn't work or you make a smudge or you don't like how it looks, you can always just take it out. And then go bring over a piece of paper. And I'm just going to smooth. And you might need to try this a few times until you get one that you like. So this one came out a little bit smudged, so I'm not quite happy with that one. But just take your time and press it around like I did with this one. So I'm quite happy with this one, so we'll stick with this one. Okay. Second one, you're going to need a sheet of plain pearl white and a link and a cutter. And I'm just using one of my circle cutters. Just take that, insert that in, and press. And just get all to the edges until it looks nice. Put that aside and I'll bring over my roses and I reduced it down a little bit so that I have three sizes. Like that. So I'll start with my largest one and take a thin slice. Try and get as thin a slice as you can. So I'm just going to slice it a few times and pick the one I like best. That one I like best. Bring this over and just make this so that it's round and place it where you want it. I'm putting it roughly in the middle. Then I'm going to take this one, which is a nice small cane. And I'm going to cut a few slices. And I'm just going to take it round it out and then place it in the bezel the way that I like Yeah. Okay, 
move that out the way bring over that fold of paper again and burnish and this is going to flatten out those canes now you don't want it that your clay goes over your the border on your link you don't want it to be higher than it either because we want to put a layer of resin on there we go and there's our smoothed out piece so that's our other one and now for the last one we are going to bring over our cane and we're going to take a few slices they need to be whole slices and I like this one because although it doesn't really look like roses anymore it has a nut it's going to match nicely with the PBO paint with the swirls and things so you're going to have two pieces that look like roses and then two and then another piece that's going to echo what the PBO paints look like so we're going for kind of an abstract sort of a feeling on the rose here okay, and you can see that I'm just overlapping them those two away bring over that piece of paper again and burnish and we want this flattened out completely and I'm using my finger to do this because my roller is not going to be able to get in there okay let's have a look okay. now you might need to use your finger to Spread this out so that it goes all the way up to the edges. And that's why I said it looks all swirly and it doesn't really look like a bunch of roses. Okay, pop that in, burnish it to get rid of fingerprints. There we go, that's what you're going to get. You're going to get a nice swirly sort of effect. So, those are those ones. And so you need to make, um, let's see, two of each. So I'm quite happy with this one that I made. So that one I'm going to keep. And then I'm going to make another one of each of these. So now that those are done, we want to do our PBR paint bezels. So I'll bring over those colours and I'm going to be using Prism. This is PBO Prism and it's Ash Blue, PBO Prism Eggshell White and then I'm going to be using PBO Moon Metal Blue. I think those two go together, those three go together really nicely. So now you need to mix each of them thoroughly. If I open this, it's supposed to have this colour, but if you look in there, it's kind of dark and grey, and you can see metallic particles on each side. That needs to be mixed up thoroughly before you start pouring it, because otherwise the actual prism effect won't work. So mix this up, I'd say mix about 30 seconds on each one maybe even more depending on how old it is if it's a nice fresh bottle you should be able to get it mixed in about 30 seconds an old bottle might take you up to a minute okay and I'll do this for each of them okay now that I've got those mixed I'm just going to bring over this little translucent mat to work on 
because it will just mean that I can move this around and I can move it off my work surface when I'm finished. So, what I want to start with is, I want to start with this eggshell white and I want to drip a little bit in the middle here. And now I want to do something similar to what I've done with the rest with the uh, roses. I'm going to make two, no wait, three different um, bezels. Okay, so this one I'm going to make just prism. Just bring that blue around. Okay, to touch those edges. There we go. Do the same on the other side. Now I can't get it to match exactly, but we can get it to look really similar. This will look quite nice, it actually matches very nicely with the roses. And you don't even have to use a rose for this, you could just use a normal flower cane. Okay, there we go. I've got a little drop on the edge there, just want to wipe that off. There we go. Now I'm just going to use a little piercing pin. drag this white across and I think that one actually needs a little bit more white okay and this one I got a little drop as well and while the PBO paint is wet just be careful and you can just clean up any messes that you made. It's better to do it while it's wet. Okay, so I'll just leave those two like they are. Now I'll bring over another two. And this one I'm going to have purple PBO. Is it with me and dripping today? Just quickly dry that off with a wet wipe. Sometimes you have those days where things just seem to keep happening. Anyway, I'll pop the PBO, the ash blue prism in and I'll drag that across to all the sides. And then I'm going to take my metal blue and I'm going to just pop a drop in there. And I might pop another drop there and then another drop there. Just spot some little drops around because what's going to do is it's essentially going to cancel the prism effect that you get it's going to make more of a webbing effect like you can see so don't expect to have that bubbly effect that, that gets cancelled out by the moon and I have done another tutorial already I do believe it was called um, modern art pendants. I can't quite remember what it is. I'll provide a link to it because I did other PBO paints and I used the moon in, and you can see exactly what the moon does in a larger environment because I did some skins so there was more room for it to move around. It looks really pretty but you need to understand what you're going to get from the effect because 
if you're expecting to have it all bubbles, you're going to be sorely disappointed because it really does take away those bubbles. So you can see, if you look here, that we're getting a lot of spider webbing and kind of almost a fungi sort of effect. Yeah, now I'll bring over the last one, and this is going to be our middle vessel. And this one, I'm going to do the same thing, just with the eggshell white. And bring that all to the edges. I really like the PBO paint, and if um, if you want to get into PBO paint, I highly recommend getting the starter kits. You can get that from Linda's Art Spot, and I know that Over the Rainbow also carries it in Australia. So, if you're looking to get started in P PBO and you don't know whether you like it or not, I highly recommend those starter kits. And then if you're looking for other colours and can't find them anywhere, I bought a lot of mine off of eBay. They have quite a few colours on there. There we are. And I'll just let these sit and cure for probably... Oh, it probably will take about 12 hours for these to cure to the extent where we can do some stuff with them. I'm just going to drag this white out so that we get some white out here. There we are. Okay, now I'm going to leave them and you'll see what they look like when 12 hours is up. And in the meantime, while those are curing, we're going to take our little bezels that are filled with the clay and we're going to pop these in the oven for about half an hour at Primo's recommended temperature and then we can start sanding and prepping them for the resin and we'll resin all of them together. Okay, so I've left the PBO paints to dry for around 24 hours and these pieces are now baked. So you can see how these turned out. So here are those prism ones where it's just the prism and you can see how lovely those turns out. Those turn out. The uh, bubbles are all beautiful and it's nice and hard now and now because we're ba making this on a metal surface the PBO paint will have cured whereas if we were doing it on a polymer clay surface it wouldn't have cured yet and here's what the moon looks like mixed with the PBO and this has a completely different effect as you can see it's really really cool and now when you put multiple drops on so on that one I put six drops you see one two three four five six Put six drops on creates a really cool um, almost somewhat geometric look in the middle this one I put four drops in so one two three four so it forms almost a little triangle pattern this one I put four drops in one two three four oh five one two three four five and you can see it's formed another little pattern there so that's quite cool and you can see it has all of these cool little bubbles and things so that's the difference between the moon paints and things. So now that these are dry, we're going to be able to put resin on them. But before we do that, we want to sand these. So I'm just going to take these off. And I love how this turns out. It really gives almost like a painted effect. It doesn't even really look like a cane anymore, which is quite nice and is what I wanted to achieve with these roses. I don't want them to look realistic. I wanted them to kind of have that painted feel to them which is quite nice. So I'm going to start with my 400 grit sandpaper and I'm just going to give it a light sand. I'm going to sand for my 400 up to my 8000 on each of these little discs. Don't worry about getting it super shiny because we are going to be putting resin on this. You just want to get rid of any smudges and things like that. Even fingerprints to a certain degree will be hidden by the resin. So if you have a bunch of those Try and get rid of them, but you don't have to worry too much about it. So the goal here is to just sharpen up this image a bit. So I'll continue sanding and then when we're done, we can pop our resin on. Okay, so now that we have given them a sand, we are going to mix up our resin. So I'm going to be using this resin plunger. And I'll just open that up. 
and then allow the bubbles to settle or rise to the top and then press evenly with your plunger to push out your hardener and your resin. Now a nice thing about this is it measures out this resin for you on a one to one scale so you have equal parts of both. There you go. And so it takes a lot of the work out for you and so you don't have to worry about you know not mixing up your resin properly because that's probably the biggest um, thing when it comes to two part resins but you do need to make sure that you mix it properly but then again that's not too hard especially since ice resin has a lovely long working time of about 45 minutes in cold weather and about 15 in really hot weather um, but you mix it for around three to five minutes in cold weather you'd mix for five minutes because the resin is an azerone in warm weather you'll find that the resin actually mixes quite quickly so you'll be able to mix it in about one minute then you can pour it onto your beads and it will set in about 24 hours and if you put it in the sun it will actually cure within five hours depending on how hot the sun is midday sun in the middle of summer is really good it cures in about two hours which is excellent um, you can put it under a UV light but I find that the sun works just fine if you're going to put it in the sun however just be careful because if you leave it out there too long your resin can burn and go yellow so just keep an eye on it so I'll mix this for around three minutes and I'm trying to avoid getting air bubbles in here because that's a little bit of a problem but you'll find in summer when it's nice and warm the air bubbles rise really easily and in winter you've got plenty of working time to work those air bubbles out so I'll carry on mixing and then when we're done we can apply it to our beads okay so now that that's mixed I'll just bring over our tray with our pendants well not pendants I guess I guess you would kind of call these links not really beads or pendants I'm just gonna separate them out okay and then bring over our resin and the bubbles that are on here we can get rid of in a little while now when you're doing this be careful because um, you don't want to overflow so I'll just put a little bit on and I'm going to stretch it to the edges of the bezel very carefully you don't want it to spill over that silver rim so try and keep it inside that silver ring there we are and I'll do that now I might want a bit of a dome on those but um, I prefer to just dish out the resin for all of my bezels first and then I will have let that settle I can blow out the air bubbles and then I can add more resin if I think it needs to but it's better to let it settle see if there's enough resin on there and then come back and add okay. and I'll just do this for all of my bezels Okay, so here's how they look now that I have popped the resin on and I've decided I'm happy with the dome. So now I'm going to use a long straw to just blow the bubbles away. So hopefully you'll be able to see that. So watch this one. There's plenty of bubbles on here. There we are. Easy and simple and it means that you don't have to go and use a blow torch and you'll do that with all the other ones, like here and the important thing is to try and keep your breath hot so don't be going going through the tube try and go so that your breath is slow but hot because heat pops the bubbles so you could use a heat gun as well but then some projects work better than others as far as that goes because you can blow the resin off there we 
there we go and that's pretty much all the bubbles and I'll just go around and check to see if you have any hairs I think I might have one here yes I do because those can be a little problematic so just go around make sure that your dome is smooth if you see any abnormalities in your dome you might have a hair there let me see there's one and I know that a lot of you have cats in your studio and so the likelihood of you having a hair or two uh, is quite high so just go through and try and capture those hairs and then leave it to cure for 24 hours okay so here they are now that they're completely cured and this is the necklace pattern that I have so I have these ones down over here. Let me see if I can bring those down to show you. There we are. So you can see what it looks like. So now all we need to do is basically link these up using jump rings. So I'll just tip out some jump rings. And I've got some open ones in here. And that will save me some time. I'll just open them actually, it won't take me too long. So you'll just take a jump ring and two pliers, grab it, twist to open, select two of your pieces, close the jump ring, yeah. open another jump ring, Oops. I have a habit of not opening it with the pliers. Select your next one, link it up, and close. And you'll continue doing that the whole way around. And then at the end, just link up your chosen clasp. And then that is all you have to do. It's really simple. And there we are. That is what it looks like. So I'm really happy with how this turned out. It looks quite spectacular. It's better than I actually imagined it looking. So I'm probably going to call this necklace Evening Rose because of the colours. And you can of course use the techniques shown in this tutorial for many different ones. You don't have to use the same cane that I used. You can use any cane that you want. Um, you don't have to necessarily use PBO paints here. You can use other paints. You could use alcohol inks. Just If you're going to use alcohol inks, make sure that you paint the background white or something like that and then use the alcohol inks because the alcohol inks are translucent. But there's lots of different things that you can do with it and it's quite effective. So, I do hope that this tutorial was helpful to you and if it was, please do let me know as that is always helpful to me. And if you liked it, please do leave a like and a comment. I always love to hear your comments on what the projects were like. And if you would like to support me, please do visit my Patreon account as I do post tutorials on there every single month. Um, projects, tip tutorials, colour recipes, early releases, all sorts of things that I'm sure you guys will love. So please do check that out. And as always, I will see you in the next tutorial. Bye for now.